It doesn't matter if you're level 3 or level 300, hordes are going to be your biggest challenge. And there's been a massive change to how game stage is calculated in Alpha 21, which has huge implications on the difficulty of screamer hordes, wandering hordes, and horde knights. So today, I'm going to explain how all of them work so that you can better predict what kind of threat you'll be facing and strategize ways to survive. Let's dig in by reviewing game stage and how that's changed. Game stage is the calculation that determines how many and what type of zombies will spawn. It's a relatively simple calculation. It's just level multiplied by biome multiplier plus biome bonus times 1.2 plus days alive minus deaths times two. <laughs> you know, I know that's some pretty dense stuff. The only reason I mentioned this is because it's actually way different than it was in previous versions of the game. Basically, the game's gonna become a lot more difficult in the harder biomes now. <laughs> and if you would, just leave me a like because it took me so long to actually do all the testing to figure out out the exact order of operations for that calculation. Okay, moving on. And so here is a visual representation of how that all looks in each biome. So you're gonna have one and a half times for the desert, two times for the snow biome, and two and a half times for the wasteland. And plus, you also get that biome bonus. You actually just get a flat number added onto your game stage for each biome. And so here's what that would look like for a level one character on day one. So in the pine forest biome, you're gonna have a game stage of one, but in the wasteland, you're gonna have a game stage of 39. Again, day one, level one, no deaths. And if you'd like, you can also go to the players tab and you can look at your game stage or you can just type into the console, quote, game stage, and that will show you your loot stage as well and your days alive too. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, in terms of how game stage works, we can now dig into wandering hordes. A wandering horde will trigger every 12 to 24 hours. And when a wandering horde triggers, the zombies will start moving roughly toward the location you were in when it triggered. So oftentimes if you're on the move, you'll never even notice them because they'll just kind of wander off somewhere behind you. And there are 50 predefined wandering horde groups in the game files. And most of these groups are between like three and 11 enemies and will contain mostly just regular zombies with the occasional dog or vulture mixed in. But there are seven special groups. There's the biker group, which is mostly bikers and party girls. Then there's the dog group, a pack of six to seven dogs. The vulture group, which is a wake of six to eight zombie vultures. And yes, I had to look up what a group of vultures is called. And there's the zombie animal group, which is a mix of five either zombie dogs or zombie bears. Then the wolf pack, which is a mix of five either wolves or dire wolves. Then the soldier group, which is like a platoon of soldiers and hazmat men mostly. And then there's finally the zombie bear group, which is just a pair of zombie bears. Now, these wandering hordes run on a loop, so you'll cycle cycle through all 50 of them in order and then it will circle back around to the beginning of the list and run through them all over again. So in other words, you'll never see like two back to back zombie dog groups or zombie bear groups. And as of Alpha 21, loot bags now have a higher probability to drop from wandering horde zombies. You have about a 45% chance to see one on every third zombie kill. Okay, moving on to screamer hordes. Screamer zombies spawn whenever the heat in a chunk reaches 100% and a chunk is just, you know, an area of the map. And the following items will produce heat. Torches, candles, burning barrels, campfires, forges, and chemistry stations. Just to note, lights like lanterns and electric lights do not produce heat. Then there's hitting glass or metal with tools or weapons, including bullets, destroying blocks, opening doors, Screamer screams, gunshots, but slightly less heat if the gun is silenced, auger and chainsaw initiation, meaning that it's only when you first start it. No extra heat is produced by continuous running. And also opening some containers like filing cabinets, cash registers, lockers, safes, and chests, just to name a few. Oh, and did I mention explosions? And heat will actually build up and cool down over time. And all items differ, all sources of heat differ, but let's just look at the campfire as an example here. It produces a 5% heat event every hour, but cools down one event every five hours. So it'll take exactly 24 hours of continuous runtime to reach 100% and then, you know, spot a screamer. And once that screamer spawns, she will hunt for you. And if she sees you, she'll scream and she'll summon additional zombies, which will be locked on to your position. And each subsequent scream will usually summon more zombies, anywhere from one zombie per scream at game stage one up to five zombies per scream at game stage 11 and onward. 
However, there are caps on the number of zombies that screamers can spawn in in total, and this increases with your game stage. So early on, a screamer might only be capable of summoning a handful of zombies, while later on, she might have seemingly limitless spawning power. And screamer hordes can also contain additional screamers, including the feral and radiated variants. These screamers have the same ability as a normal screamer. They just have like more hit points and do a little bit more damage and look slightly more intimidating. Okay, now we're moving on to the main event, Horde Knight. When Horde Knight starts, the game stage is locked in. So if you level up during the fight, or if someone, say, logs off during a multiplayer session, the Horde difficulty will not change. There is a lot that goes into Horde Knight. So first, let's go over waves. From game stage 1 through 7, you'll see just one wave. From game stage 10 to 19, you'll see two. And from game stage 23 on until forever, you'll see three waves on Horde Knight. And when one wave ends, the next wave begins. And each subsequent wave will be slightly more difficult than the last one. And the wave will only end if the timer of that wave expires or all of the zombies in that wave are eliminated. Okay, so I just mentioned that timer. This is called the wave duration. A wave duration is one hour each until up to game stage 49, meaning that wave one will start at 2200, wave two will start at 2300, and wave three will start at midnight and will end at 1 a.m. or whenever you kill off all the zombies. And just as a reminder, if you kill off the whole wave in less than that one hour, the next wave will still kick in. So that's just up until game stage 49. From game stage 54 on, the first two waves will last two hours each, and the third wave will last for seven hours and this is how it'll go for the rest of the game so in that case wave one will be at 22 wave two will be at 0 hundred and wave three will be at 0 200 again unless you killed all of them off sooner or of course when the horde night ends at 0 400 and so a couple of times now i've touched on killing off the whole wave and ending it early and that there is governed by the quote number setting this is coded in the game files every horde wave has a set number of total zombies that will be in that wave not the total that will be alive at any given time but the total that can possibly spawn in that wave the higher the game stage the more zombies there will be per wave the maximum number of zombies that can be alive at any given time in a horde night wave is governed in two areas. The first is right here in the game files. This will increase from one horde to the next. And so I think of this as a variable soft cap. Then there's a fixed hard cap, which is in your game settings, and it's called the Blood Moon Count. And you can set it to whatever you want to be, and it will never be exceeded. So even on 64 zombies here in the settings, the Blood Moon Count, you technically won't actually see 64 zombies alive at once until game stage 210, because that's when the max alive setting finally has increased up to 64. And so you'll see that cap reached. And even if you're at game stage 600, and it says here in the game files that the max alive is 183, the actual number of max alive cannot go that high. So it will be whatever you set it to back in the settings, the hard cap. Next up, there's a fun setting called the interval. The interval is a random number between about 10 and 30 seconds that will be a lull between waves. So let's say you kill off one wave. It might be totally quiet for several seconds before another wave kicks in and the inexperienced player might be coaxed out of their base looking for loot bags only to get ambushed by more zombies. Let me just review one example here and I'll show you how this all works when it's put together. So if your game stage is between 64 and 68, this is gonna be the horde that you face. The first wave will be at 2200. There will be 91 zombies in that wave, but only 22 of them will be alive at any given time. It will last two hours, and there will be a 15 second pause between this wave and the next wave, which will be slightly higher, geared toward a player at a game stage of 59. The same number will be in this wave with the same max alive, and it'll last the same amount of time, but this time only a 13 second interval before the next wave, which will be similar to the previous ones, but this one will last either all night until 4 a.m. or until you have killed all the zombies. Now let me touch on multiplayer, because the way that Horde Knights are calculated for groups is more dynamic. The game will pool the game stage of all the players in one area, regardless if they are allied or in a party. 
and it will only calculate up to six players. Whatever the Blood Moon count setting is set to for that server will determine how many zombies spawn per person in that group. And the difficulty of that horde will first be calculated based off the person with the highest game stage. Their game stage number is multiplied by a number called the starting weight, which in the game files is currently 1.0. Each subsequent player in the calculation has their game stage multiplied by the quote, diminishing returns number. The diminishing returns number will be 50% of the last person's weight before being added to the grand total. So let's just review a quick example to get this straight. Three players, one is game stage 150, another game stage 100, and the last one game stage 50, all in a group. Cumulatively, their game stage is 300, but applying a 1.0 modifier to the first, a 0.5 modifier to the second, and a 0.25 modifier to the third, we'll see that the game's calculated game stage for this group would be rounded down to 212. So basically, the highest game stage player has the most weight, and each subsequent player in the group has less and less impact on Horde difficulty. And I would say that that's just about all there is to know, but there are a few tidbits of information that you might find useful. First off, one zombie will spawn each second during Horde night. Wilderness zombies and animals will not spawn, but if they're already spawned in, then they'll still linger around. POI zombies will spawn in during Horde night. Screamer zombies will not spawn and heat will not be generated. Demolition zombies can begin appearing during Horde Night at game stage 147. And just to drive home this whole biome modifier to your game stage, let's say for an example that you're level 33 on day 14 and you live in the wasteland. You'll be game stage 149, and like I just said, you'll be about to see some demolition zombies in your horde on day 14. And there you go, everything there is to know about heat, hordes, and game stage. Leave me a like if you would, and consider subscribing for more guides just like this, and I'll catch you hopefully in the next video. Take care, everyone. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.